guys welcome to my channel my name is Iberichi Igwe Obuna and on today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a cow blouse okay so I posted some of those pictures and um, I got a lot of response some pictures from my students work I got a lot of response with people asking me to create a pattern for this so in response to that I'm going to create a cow blouse so if you want to learn how to make a cow blouse Keep watching this video meanwhile i'm the writer of the books advanced pattern mastery for the african woman a detailed pattern illustration guide that teaches you how to make different outfits and the patterns for different outfits tailors measurements book and of course pattern making for the shapely african woman so let's get down to business so the first thing you're going to do when you want to make patterns for your cow blouse is basically very simple you just draw your lines draw your lines for your neckline this neckline you draw line for your shoulder line you draw line for the chest chest line armhole line then you're going to draw your bust line i'm not really interested in the under bust line except you want to do under bust shaping and all that but for now I'm not really interested, but I'll just do it anyway. Under bust, so this is under bust. So we're going to have the high waistline. So if you want to make it into a peplum, you would have. Uh, if you want to make it into a peplum, you can stop at the high waistline. Maybe you add to an allowance later. Or if you want a full blouse so that you can tuck it in or something, you can just go ahead and drag it like this. Then maybe you can add hem if you want to. You can just add him of half inch or one inch so i'm going to treat this side as the front and i'm going to treat this side as the back so if you're new to this channel please this is the right time for you to subscribe so this is my front panel i'm not just going to start with the center front normal neckline no i'm going to leave about nine inches nine inches nine inches is the standard i use i'm going to leave about nine inches and i would mark a line so this line i'm going to mark now is going to stand as my center front line okay so these are this is going to make my center front line so this nine inches is an extension is an extension of the cow like i love to do a lazy method i don't like the whole slash and spread thing for cow blouses so you can just go ahead and mark your neck width mark your neck width you mark your shoulder normal shoulder divided by two just construct your basic blouse uh, pattern so if you are watching this video i believe you should already know how to construct your basic blouse block if you don't know how to do that i'm going to put the link in the description box so that you'll be able to do that so i wouldn't go into details in that to avoid making the video so long Okay, so if you want to add a dart to this, you can just go ahead and add a dart. And uh, let me see if I'll do the underboss shaping. If I want a very fitted outfit, you just do the underboss shaping. Just finish your basic blouse block. So this is for the front pattern and this is for the back pattern. So you've drawn your normal neck width, normal neck depth, shoulder. You've drawn a basic blouse block. You can add your sewing allowance of, let's say, one inch one inch sewing allowance you can decide to blend this other place if you want to actually so you go over to your back if you want to have a zipper you mark an allowance for your zip and you would go ahead and use the same neck weight you use here on the back all right so this is zip allowance so this is shoulder so shoulder divided by two of course just Follow your basic pattern for a basic blouse block. Then, of course, we'll have something like this. We'll have something like this. And we're gradually coming to the end of this video. Then you just have your dart at the back. Just basic, stopping at this point. So the next thing we are going to do is that we're going to make alterations to this front. And that is where the beauty of a cow blouse comes in. So we're not really interested in the back, per se. We're majorly interested in the front panel so we're going to slant it now you're slanting from the neckline the uppermost neckline down to the hemline so now that we are done doing that 
I'm going to cut it out. I'm not interested in the back yet. So I'm going to cut it out. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, just click on the subscribe button and then the bell button so that you see the notifications whenever I make any new posts. If you've not liked this video yet, just give it a thumbs up. I'm sure it's going to be very useful to you. So you can go ahead and share it so that your friends can also learn. So now I'm done cutting this. This is the extension. I'm done cutting it. So what you do is that you slant it. Like you just follow the slant, you know, the red extension you see I'm, I'm not doing anything to the back yet i'm not interested in the back yet so i'm going to go ahead and deal with the back i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and transform this piece so this is what i'll do i'll take my pattern paper i'll fold the pattern paper in half so i'm going to take this this is my new center front line so this is our CF line. Your, this is no longer your center front line. So you just go ahead and place this like this. You see? So we've placed it. So I can use a metal rule to blend the edge. To blend the full length. I don't want it to just go slanting upwards. So I'll just use a metal rule to blend the edge of the foot then i'm seeing that this one is pointed upwards i don't want it to just point upwards so i can just place a metal rule flatten it out make sure i have equal dimensions and you know use it to mark out this one now this is what we are going to do i've already marked out this one so i'm going to cut it out so that it doesn't confuse us so we just go mark here because it's your shoulder seam that's where you would join on your shoulder line guys it's finally coming together so you connect this so this is our center front so from having this piece to eliminating here and adding something here and doing all the transformation this is our new pattern. I'm no longer interested in anything concerning this pattern now. So this is our center. This is our center front. This is our top. That's neckline. You see, I'm not having the round neck thing anymore. So this is our shoulder. This is our armhole. And this is our side. So this is a full length. So I'm still seeing that it's a little bit, it's tilting up a little bit. So I could just go ahead and tilt it downwards. Not like you slant it to be pointed. I just want it to be flat and neat. So if you still want to have your curve, you can just go ahead and maintain your side curve. So let me just cut it out so that you can see it. The very aim of the cow blouse is that the neck of the front, the neck width of the front is far bigger than that of the back. And since it's far bigger than that of the back, it's going to droop. And have that cow effect it's going to have a drooping fall cow effect so that's why so this is what it actually looks like eventually so i know you're going you're going to be wondering what happens to that eventually since i've already um changed everything there's no center front now now that you have the straight line as your new center front you're also going to have a new dart position so you measure your normal dart position. You know your dart position from the center front. You go ahead and measure it. Assuming it's three inches. Assuming it's three inches, you go ahead and mark your three inches. Just mark it all through. Mark it across all your lines. And you know how you do your normal markings. You just share your share your dart. Let me let me transfer. Let me transfer the line, some of the lines here. Okay, say stop here, stop here, here. So you can use a tracing wheel for this. I actually didn't um, make this tutorial with my tracing wheel, but you can just go ahead and use a tracing wheel for it. Just get your actual points. Just remark your dots again. And this is all we have if you want a dot. But if you don't want a dot, if you like it lazy, fine, go ahead and do the lazy thing and it's all good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces of this. Just like we make our basic blouse block. So I shared a lot of videos 
on how I cut my blouse pattern, sew the blouse pattern and everything. So you don't need you don't need to worry about making a basic blouse block if you don't already need, know that. So this is the back slip. So you still cut the normal neck depth of the back. So when you want to join it now, you would have to join this way. So I want to show you a sample with a dripping fabric. You cut this with a fabric that drops, not a fabric that is, uh, that is stiff like Ankara or Dirabal. Okay, so I'm going to use this fabric to do the cutting. So I, I can just go ahead and cut this first. I just want you to see what it is like in real sense of it. Okay, please use your pins when cutting. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So before ever I even join the back, see, see what we have here. So you can see the look what we have. So I've scattered it because I want to join the back, but before joining the back it just stays you have that drooping effect here you have your shoulder you have your armhole you have your sides i'm not dating this one so i'm just going to go ahead and cut two pieces for the back so i can have a proper So if you want to register for any of my online courses, click on the link in the description box to see my seller online store where most of my online courses are hosted. These are the two back pieces. So we have our front piece. So you're going to join the front piece to the back piece, shoulder to shoulder. So we'll have our shoulder piece. And that's why I said you have to make sure you maintain the sharp points. You might have encountered some small errors when cutting without my pin. So please don't mind these tiny errors. When you're cutting with your fabric, I trust it's going to run perfectly, just like the ones my students did. So you can just take this to a sewing machine around your stitches and then you come back and you're looking at the fact that this place is dripping it's dripping because it's not equal with the back and that's actually what we are looking out for 
so it has a falling dripping effect so just like these ones on this page so if this video has been useful to you do well to like this video share and subscribe thank you for watching see you in the next training video